ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Grant Gavin. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Hello, Family First members. I'm so happy to be here today. Tell you, I missed this event last year, and I've been waiting 365 days to be back. So a massive thank you to JT Fox. A massive thank you to Damien for giving me this opportunity. Um, but it's really, it's going to be a fantastic three days. And I think we all of us need to just thank the entire JT Fox team. This is a world-class event. So let's put our hands together for all of them. So today I want to take you on a ride with me. I want you to imagine it's a warm, hot, sweaty, humid summer day. Think Florida type humidity. You're driving in your car, your comfortable air-conditioned car, and you pull up to this traffic light. The light's red, you come to a stop, and there at the light stands a tall man. He looks uncomfortable, his appearance is grubby, he's dirty, he's holding a sign. He's asking you for money, food, or a job. And you glance at him quickly, but just as quickly you turn away because it's too awkward to stare at him. That man at the traffic light, he can see how you avoid him. He can see how you stop your car a few meters away from him. He can see how you raise your window as he walks towards you. And because he can see how uncomfortable he's making you, he feels completely humiliated, vulnerable, and all alone. And it's not that you didn't give him money. It's that you can't even look at him, greet him, say hello. He stands in the sun that day for four hours, and he receives the equivalent of $3 from four people. He also receives three peppermints and a toothpick from a kind little old lady. <laughs> the money, not enough to get him into a shelter for the night where he would have received a warm bowl of soup, but the kindness gives him some hope. You see, I know these feelings, I know these emotions, because that man is me. <laughs> Terrible picture. <laughs> But no, 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 before you get ahead of yourself, that's not how I started my career. I'm a property entrepreneur. I own multiple businesses. I'm a public speaker from Durban, South Africa. My life's great. I'm very, very comfortable. So why would I put myself through such a humiliating experience? Well, I said it. I was comfortable. I grew up privileged. I never had to beg for food or money, not a day in my life. Yet millions of people around the world, they live off less than $1.20 a day. I'm privileged. I'm alive. I've got access to opportunities. Every single one of you in the room today is privileged. But the problem with privilege sometimes is that those of us who have it, we're completely unaware of it. So I knew there were lessons to be learned. I knew I had to stretch myself outside of my comfort zone. But what I didn't realize or expect was that this would be the most incredible learning experience of my life. And it so nearly never happened. Sitting on the steps that day, dressed up, disguised in makeup and a wig, but dressed down to fit in like a homeless person on the streets, I was suddenly overcome by the most incredible, paralyzing fear. And you all know the feeling, you've all felt it before. It's that churning in the stomach, it's the butterflies in the stomach, it's the heaviness, it's the numbness in the legs. It's that feeling of fear that you feel as you're about to break through your comfort zone. And here I was about to go from my successful, comfortable world to a place of poverty and survival. And I was about to hold back. I was so worried about, about what people would think if they recognized me on the street. It's crazy. But people will tell you that success lies on the other side of your comfort zone, but what they don't tell you is that to get to the other side of your comfort zone is very painful. And it's all our insecurities and our fears that come to the fore. So what insecurities and fears are holding you back in your life or your business right now? How many opportunities have you passed upon? How many calculated business risks have you held back on? How many relationships have you held back on because of your own securities and fears? But I just knew that I had to drag myself up those stairs because beyond our comfort zone lies the next stage in success. And we've got to push ourselves through. So that I did. And I ended up on the street with my son, completely immersed in this world of poverty, and all I kept thinking about was, if this was really me, how would I get out of it? So it got me thinking of the four stages of success. Survival, stability, success, and significance. 
You all know survival. There I was experiencing it for the first time in my life. But survival is that place where there's not enough money to match your expenses. Every month's a mad dash to make ends meet, and it's categorized by low cash flow, high stress, high fear, and high anxiety. Some of your businesses might even be at survival right now, and that's okay. It's just part of your journey. But here's the thing about survival. It's not a place you want to hang around for too long. In fact, if survival were a traffic light, you want it to turn green as you're approaching so you can just shoot on through. But these stages of success, they are stages. It's a sequence. And in order to move from survival to stability, you need to change your habits. And you know what people are like with change. Dr. Nita Cobain puts it so well. He says, the only people who welcome change are babies in wet diapers. But there's three reasons why people change. Number one is when they're hurting enough that they have to change. Number two is once they've learned enough that they want to change. And number three is once they've been given enough training and resource to be able to change. So what are some of the bad habits that are holding you back in your life and your business right now? And what is it going to get you to change those habits? Because you don't want to put your head in the sand. You don't want to wait until you get to that point where you're hurting so bad that you have to change. But then it's too late sometimes. So we want, to, we want to change our behavior. We want to look at those habits that are holding us back, and we want to strengthen on those habits that need strengthening. And people who are stuck at survival, the number one thing that they battle with is money management. When people are in financial trouble, they put their head in the sand. They hope that it goes away. But if your business is spending more money than it's earning, you're never going to escape from that traffic light of survival. Time management is something else, but time is really, really easy. And a lot of people have spoken about this today. We all have time, but it's what we do with our time. It's what we prioritize in our day, getting those important activities done first. So if we can develop the good habits, we can get rid of the bad habits, we can move from survival to a place called stability. And stability is really comfortable. And it's interesting, most people in the world are stuck at stability because it is so comfortable. Stability is where you're earning enough money to just match your expenses. Your cash flow is better. You've now got some food with your meals at night. You can, um, unfortunately, though, you don't have cash reserves. You don't have any cash in the bank to invest in yourself for future growth, future equity. And because of that, you're always only going to be one, maybe two months away from going back to survival. So in order to get from stability to success, this is where we've got to change our thinking. And what do I mean by that? Well, number one, you've got to adopt a growth mindset. To grow is a choice. It's the books that you read. It's the CDs that you listen to. It's the people you associate yourself with. It's the coaching you invest in. You see, if you go to work on your job, you'll make a living. But if you go to work on yourself, you'll make an absolute fortune. So stay curious. Stay imaginative. Then you've got to start thinking like a farmer. Unfortunately, this desire for instant gratification and overnight success it only goes about killing your dreams. You've got to plant your seeds. You've got to water them daily. And you've got to do this consistently over time to reap the harvest that you so desire. The farmer doesn't wake up in the morning and decide whether he feels like watering his crops today. He does it as a matter of routine because he knows that success for him is about those consistent actions that happen over time. And then we've always got to be thinking about how we're giving value. Always give, give, give value and show that value. And it's not just value as perceived through your eyes. It's got to be value as perceived through the eyes of your customers. And we've got to be able to show that value to people before they become our customers. And I want to give you a great example. You know him very well, Mr. J.T. Fox. He comes to your countries. He comes to mine. He fills rooms, hundreds, thousands of people, and they come for free. He delivers them content. He delivers them value. He inspires them. But when they realize the impact that JT Fox can have on their life, that's when they pay. JT shows them the value, not knowing if they're going to sign up or not. He's giving value first. So in your business, how are you showing people in your market your value before they become your customer? Because if we can get to this place called success, success is that place where we're earning more money than we're spending. We've got strong, predictable cash flow. We've got good profits. And we've now got money left over that we can reinvest into our businesses so we can grow and start building equity and wealth. But the beauty about success is it has no limit. This stage has no limit. 
Success is what you, what you make of it. Success is where your mindset is. And I'll give you an example. For you, man, success might be paying off all your debt and living debt-free for the rest of your life. Whereas for you, sir, it might be the cars, the mansions, the Lamborghinis. Success is different to everybody. But for some people sitting in this room, there isn't enough money in the world that could keep them fulfilled. Because sometimes money doesn't fulfill people. Some people are always searching for something beyond success. And that's why there's one more stage left of growth. It's called significance. And not everybody gets to significance, and that's okay, because significance requires a change of heart. You see, when we get to significance, this is where we've got more money than we could ever need or want. And we start thinking about how we can actually give it away. It's about leaving a legacy. It's about impacting on people in your own communities, making their lives better. This is about taking our success and using that to inspire others and to make their lives better and to inspire them to become the best versions of themselves. That is true fulfillment. That is significance. Ladies and gentlemen, the message here today is that the sequence of growth is a sequence. You can't hope or expect to be significant in the lives of other people when you yourself are stuck at survival or stability. Nobody wants you to leave this event and go and start donating money to your community when you're battling to pay your rent. See, we've got to learn the habits. We've got to develop the good habits. We've got to eradicate the bad habits. We've got to get our thinking right. It's all a learning process. Because then when we get to success and we've learned this process, our success is sustainable. And when we get there, we're able to help so many more people through our success. And you only have to look at lottery winners and the statistics on lottery winners. Sometimes people are taken from survival and stability and they're literally thrust into significance with all this money. And what does the research show? Sometimes within three years that money's gone because they haven't learned the habits. They haven't learned the thinkings. These stages of growth are a sequence. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I had the choice, I'd never want to be standing on that street ever again begging for money. And I know if you had the choice, you'd never want to be standing on the street begging for money. But you know what? Sometimes we've got to go there, even if it's only for a few hours. In fact, sometimes life takes you to survival because success is a very poor teacher. It's a very poor teacher. And the one underlying emotion, the underlying renovation of when I walked off the street that day was that it doesn't matter where you are on that sequence of growth, whether you're at survival, stability, or success. It doesn't matter. You are exactly where you're meant to be right now. And you're exactly where you're meant to be because of all the choices and all the decisions and all the actions that you've taken that have led you to this very point today in Orlando. And I want to leave you in closing with a little challenge of my own to you. And it's very similar to what Damien said to you a little bit earlier. We have one true purpose in life, that is to become the most successful versions of ourselves. So if you're going to make one choice over these next three days, because you're going to learn a lot, you're going to get a lot of training and resource, but you need to make a decision. Don't settle. Don't ever settle. There's always another stage of growth that you can move to. So if you're going to make one choice over the next three days, ladies and gentlemen, make the choice to become the most successful version of yourself. And when you do that, watch how many other people you'll take along and inspire on the way. Thank you very much for your time.